Hey guys, it's time to try making blades on the hoss. So I made a new pallet, which has pockets for laser cut blanks. And I made some little block skin to clamp them down. First, I make the laser cut holes a nice precision size. Then I do a little chamfer, and I even do a backside chamfer just to be safe. Here's where I'm changing things up. I use some precision shoulder screws so I can get rid of the big clamp. Now I'm going to cut a very shallow pocket into the back of the blade. It's only 5 thou deep or almost as shallow as a piece of paper. For too long I focused on this curve of the blade, but not this curve. Scissors typically have a hollow grounded into their backs. They aren't actually flat. This is another way to ensure that they're only contacting at the edge when they're cutting. You don't want the inside parts rubbing together. I didn't attempt to do it for a few reasons. One, it didn't seem to be a problem. I put marker on my blades and they didn't seem to rub together. Another solution to this problem is to put a twist into the blades so that each blade angles apart from each other. Maybe this was happening to my blades inadvertently, but it seems like the rubbing might have started to become a problem now though. Two, this curve is so shallow I wasn't sure how I could do it. I could hardly see any curve at all. I need some specialized grinding machine that isn't even made anymore, or a grinding wheel multiple feet in diameter, or I could machine it, and three, if I machine it, how do I fixture it? Do I go all the way to the edge? Do I have to make a matching curve? What if I decide to change things? Does that mean I have to make a new fixture every time? As you might have guessed, I was overthinking it. I think. After talking to Grace Horn and seeing this pair of scissors, it became clear what's actually important. The metal just needs to be out of the way. The curve doesn't necessarily matter. The metal needs to be out of the way, but not all of it. I don't have to go all the way to the edge. This means I can keep an outside perimeter to use as a flat reference face to fixture against. And I don't think the curve actually matters, so I'm keeping it simple stupid and just doing a flat area. Maybe it's more noticeable, but it's functional and hopefully will make making scissors a lot easier. I also use a ball end mill to smooth out the transition and get closer to the tip. I do some other features in this op, but they're not as important. I switch them to the next op later, and they aren't brought to full size anyway until after heat treat. What is important in this op is to make the magnet hole. I can check this by dropping in the magnet and then using a ruler to see if I can see some light. It needs to be just below the surface. You know, I like these screws, but I hate that you have to use a small allen key with them. Let's try cutting a hex on the outside. That looks pretty good. Socket fits. It seems a bit loose, but it's actually a few thou oversized, and uh, Machinery's Handbook just says to go to, to the fractional diameter. Maybe better quality sockets are tighter or something. Uh, oh, so uh, because I used a collet for this setup, which works in an up and down motion, I wasn't always cutting the same height on the screw. Let's make soft jaws instead. Now I can do four at once. I like to put holes in fixtures like this so it's obvious where XYZ0 is. That's better. I'm not being very aggressive here. Being super aggressive can lead to pull out like this sometimes.
Okay, back to Pallet Town. This fixture is for the blades flipped over. And now it's nicer to tighten the screws. Then I can cut the outside contour. The only thing I have to do specifically on this side is countersink half the blades. Which can be hard to measure. I uh, accidentally made an adjustment and forgot to take the screw out. Whoops. I need a better way to measure. I tried gluing a screw to a little wrench, but it didn't work so good. I should probably figure out the real way to measure countersinks. Maybe put a ball bearing inside or something? Now I'm going to try to do the bevels. In the past, I've done it with a rounded tool, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, until I get the right angle. This is slow and it's harder to get a good finish. What I really want to do is put the blades at an angle, then just use a flat end mill but making these angled blocks could be awkward. Machine-wise gave me a good method of how to do it. First, I make the top of the block that will end up angled. I have to make a step to support the new hollowed section on the back of the blades. I just cut a path where it needs to be lower to keep the top mostly flat. The outside of the block needs to be a tight dimension. Next, I cut a pocket in a pallet the same size. Now I can use a couple pit bull clamps to hold the block upside down. It's a very tight fit. This will let us get rid of the extra material. Then I can cut the 5 degree angle I need using a ball end mill and hope that I didn't put the block in backwards. Now I can flip it over again, and use the pit bulls again. Now that first side is at an angle, which is what we want. It gets really confusing what holes need to be drilled when. Before, I drilled holes to hold the blade at an angle. Now I can drill through that face again, straight down, but it's angled, so I have holes that will be able to bolt to the pallet. Okay, let's test it. Looks pretty shiny. I went ahead and worked on the rest of the pallet. I ended up having to do four blocks at a time because I didn't give myself enough clearance for the tools though.
And now, even though I can do eight blades at a time, I still needed to find the right recipe first. The first one had gouges far too big to tumble out. And that would end up being a problem for a while. I tried a lot of different speeds and feeds. I tried different step overs. I tried adding a semi finish pass. I tried bigger tools. The blade just wants to grab or vibrate in the center. I really don't want to have to add another tab and remake the fixture. What really helped was switching from a quarter inch to a 3 16 of an inch tool. It's less tool pressure, so I guess it grabbed much less. I also found using coolant helps. It didn't seem like adding a semi-finishing pass helped though. What helped the most is the more step overs the better. So I'm taking a bunch of 10 thou wide, 10 thou deep passes. Which makes it take 20 minutes to do the bevel. So, it is kind of like what I was doing before. It's still faster though, and the finish is better. After tumbling, you can't see any tool marks. Maybe I should have held the blade vertically like this and cut it with the side of an end mill. <sighs> I'm sure I'll try that eventually. There's one last thing I do want to try though. This was one of the first tools I bought for the Tormach, which was a big mistake. Maybe if I can cut the whole blade in one go, it'll work. I kinda had to figure out a weird tool path to weave around to get all the material though. This would speed things up a ton if it worked. It leaves a decent finish, but there's kind of a line here. I wasn't able to get rid of it. Maybe this could speed up roughing at least. One last thing to do. I should have done it a long time ago. I can engrave the steel type on the blades, and it should look better if I cut it with the blades at an angle. That way I'm not using the very center of the tool. Uh... Okay, now don't get upset. The engraving is at different depths, but because I'm using a ball end mill, the difference in depth is probably only a few thou. But a few thou is big in the machining world, so I actually I am upset. I guess my blocks aren't all the same height. <sighs> I'll figure out how to fix that next time. Bye.